What's going on guys? My name is BJ and this is Praska Boys Garage. Now I've been working in my shop on another ATV project and I've ran into a compression issue with the motor. So I thought to myself, man, this might be a great opportunity to slow things down and give you guys kind of a step-by-step -step how to instructions if you're running into the same issue that I have. What I've done is I've checked compression. It's low. I think it came in right around 70 and I've determined that I have an issue with the valve. So if you were having a similar issue with compression and your valves, this video will show you everything you need. We're going to talk about the tools required to get the job done. We're going to talk about the parts you may require when doing a project like this, and then also a complete how-to step-by-step guide, tearing it completely apart and putting it all back together. So for my specific motor, I'm rolling with a 125cc that I have this issue with, but don't worry, if you have a 50 a 70, a 90, a 110, or a 125, this process will be exactly the same, so you can follow along step by step. The only real difference is gonna be the actual size of the motor, and maybe the size of the component parts we are using to replace or repair. And by the end of this video, you guys, I wanna make sure that everybody understands how to completely remove this head and disassemble it 100%. I'm talking about removing all the springs, valves, seats, keepers, just the whole nine yards. I want it blown out on the table and put back together the correct way. So the first thing we're gonna do is start talking about all the specialty tools that you may require when doing this job. All right, guys, well, with the tools for starters, I've got a compression tester, I've got a leak down tester, I've got a valve and spring compressor set, some valve grinding compound, a lapping tool, a set of feeler gauges for when we're setting those valves, and also a set of valve wrenches, which aren't necessary, but they do make life a lot easier. Also, you will need a 17, 16, 14, 10, 9, and 8 millimeter socket. Uh, grab yourself a magnet, a couple picks, and a few flathead screwdrivers. Also, you may want to grab some gaskin sealant, some engine assembly lube, and a can of carburetor cleaner. So now that you know all the tools that I'll be using to complete this job, I'm going to set you up in the stand, and I'm going to show you how to diagnose your motor and find out if you've got the same issue that I do. All right, well, you might be in this position if your motor is still on your ATV, dirt bike, or go-kart. If you've got spark and you've got fuel and it's not starting, it may be a result of a compression problem. So the first thing I'm going to do, take the spark plug out, grab your 16 millimeter socket, and remove the spark plug. You can see this one probably hasn't been changed in a hot minute. Next, what I'm going to do is grab a charged battery, and we're actually going to hook the starter up to it. I'm going to take the wire coming from the starter, and I'm going to put it on the positive side of the battery. So now that we've got the wire from the starter going to the positive side of the battery, take another wire coming from the negative side of the battery, and we're going to use that to strike against the housing of the actual starter. This will allow the motor to turn over and build that compression we need. Just like that. So now that that's set up, I'm going to grab the compression tester. All right, the compression tester is in place. Take that negative wire, ground it, and see what we get. And there you go, we're only building compression at about 70 PSI. A healthy motor is going to be in the 130 to 170 range. Anything really over 100 will probably run, but 70 is just not going to do it. Once we determine that the compression is low, I'm now going to do a leak down test to determine where that air is actually getting lost. Before we go ahead and just throw on the leak down test, one thing we want to make sure is that the motor is sitting in top dead center. When that piston's all the way to the top of this cylinder, we know that the intake valve and the exhaust valve should be completely closed. I'll show you on this brand new head, you can see both those valves are completely sealed. And what this test is doing is filling the combustion chamber up with air. And when you have low compression, the air is leaking somewhere. It's either coming out of the intake port, coming out of the exhaust port, or getting pushed past the rings out the back of this case, and we'll be able to hear it out the oil fill. To put the motor in top dead center, we wanna go ahead and remove this cap off the stator cover. That will allow us a sight hole to see inside the flywheel. And on the flywheel, there's gonna be a line and a T. That's gonna indicate when we can see it in the hole that the motor is at top dead center. Now to rotate the motor around, you will have a side cover. It may look like this. It also just may be a circle. Either way, remove it and underneath will be a 14 millimeter nut. Once your cover is removed, go ahead and put your 14 millimeter on. Put it in a counterclockwise rotation, otherwise lefty-loosey, and turn your flywheel until you see the notch with the T. And it will look something like this. 
All right, now that we know our motor is in top dead center, we can screw in our leak down tester and we need to grab the air compressor. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the air compressor line, put air in, then we're gonna go ahead and hook this chuck up and throw air into the cylinder. All right, so you can hear the air leak coming out. The intake side has a massive air leak on the exhaust, I got nothing. And out the back crank, I've got nothing. So I'm assuming my rings and piston are good. I'm assuming my exhaust valve are good. And the issue lies with the intake valve. So the diagnostics are over. We have determined that we've got low compression and we have an intake valve issue. Nothing left to do besides break it down. I'm gonna go ahead and drain the oil out. You don't necessarily have to do that as part of this process. Um, you could just easily tilt the motor up a little bit and allow that oil to sit in the back. But one, I don't wanna cause a mess. And two, if you're having motor problems already, it's probably not bad practice to just go ahead and change the oil anyway. So grab your 17 millimeter. And if that oil looks fairly new to you, that's because it is. I just changed the oil as part of the process and rebuilding this ATV. And uh, then I checked compression and found out that I had the issue. All right, now that the motor's drained, let's go ahead and grab our 10 millimeter socket and we're gonna take off the timing chain cover. So this bolt travels all the way through the other side that holds this cover on. All right, let's pull that bolt out and this cover should come right off. There we go. Now that we've removed the cover, you can see we exposed the timing chain, the timing chain sprocket, and these three bolts. We wanna go ahead and take those three off right now. So grab your nine millimeter. I'm gonna zip them off with an impact. And with the help of a pick, we're gonna just wiggle this free and rotate it off the chain. There you go. Now we're ready to remove the head. That's gonna require these four head nuts. And then also there's a bolt right here, all are 10 millimeter. Behind all four nuts, you will find washers. Make sure not to lose these because you will need them when you put them back on. While I'm doing this, I want you guys to note something. On this cover, you will see an arrow that is pointing down. This thing does orientate only one way. If you flip it upside down, it will smash on there, but you're gonna be offline on your gasket, so that arrow needs to be facing down with reassembly. Just a note to pay attention to when you're taking it apart. All right, and now the head should come right off. Before I show you the head, I do wanna note a couple things on the top side of the cylinder, and that is one, the orientation of this gasket. If you do have a new gasket to replace it, I suggest doing it now. If you only have the original, just be careful in pulling it apart, that way you don't damage it or destroy it. Now there are a couple pin locators or dowel pins. You can see one is in the top left, one is in the bottom right. You also have this tiny seal right here, and you have this guy that always sticks on right on the oil channel. That'll go just sit in inside right here. Here is the man of the hour, the one that's given us all the problems, the head itself. And a closer look just at inside, you can see all that carbon buildup. It looks pretty bad, um, but those valves almost look like they're seated all the way. It may be disguising just at first look. Go ahead and grab yourself a flashlight, shine it on the valve and look inside the port. So in this case, this is where your intake manifold is that your carb hooks up to. Shine the light and look down. You can see we've got oil peeking through. That's a bad thing. That is where our loss of compression is coming from. One quick thing, if you don't want to actually tear this head completely apart and fix those valves, you can run over to VMC's website. They do actually sell complete heads already assembled for these motors. They sell them in the 50s, 90s, 110s, and 125s. This one specifically runs about $50, and all you have to do is reinstall and then set your valves. It's a nice, easy, quick option if that's what you want to do, but in this case, I'm going to set this to the side, and we're going to go ahead and break this guy down.
All right, grab a 17 millimeter. We're gonna remove the valve covers, maybe. Oh, whoever put those on, put them on way too tight. Oh, oh my goodness. All right, so next we're gonna start taking out the rockers. This bolt is a nine millimeter, but for me, I've got my handy dandy wrench here. It's gonna loosen that guy up. See, that's off and you can see that rocker is now free to move. And we'll do the other side. All right, now both rockers are free. We'll go ahead and take this cover off. These are both eight millimeter bolts. And this cover should pop right off. Well, I think we destroyed the gasket, so probably need a new one of those. Now with your pick, you can reach in and there's pins that hold the rockers in place. You just put a little pressure on it and pull it. And you can see that will come right out with your rocker arm. Same for the other side. Now inside this motor is something that's actually very rare. And I've only seen it a handful of times on these Chinese ATVs. And that is a decompression valve. You can see right here, I'll pull this guy out. So a lot of times you guys won't see this, but in this motor, it does have one. Our cam is ready to pop out. And it should just come out just like that. All right, next thing we gotta do is we gotta remove these springs and get this valve out. So I'm gonna get set up with the valve and spring compressor and show you guys how to do it. You take your spring and valve compressor you're going to line up the bottom on the valve so the valve can't push down and then the top is just going to tighten down on the spring all right and to show you it should look something like this it should look something like that and like that and now we're going to compress the spring down Make sure you have your magnet handy. Because what we're looking for is our spring to compress just like that. And you can see in here, see all those keepers have now popped up. We're going to grab the magnet and fish them out. Just like that. There's one and out pops the other one. So we'll go ahead and release all the tension. All right, now that the keepers are out of the way, you've got your cap and you're gonna have two springs. And as you pull these out, you wanna investigate and look at them. I've had the same compression issue, but one of these springs was actually broken. So double check both the outer and the inner spring which mine look good on this side. And there's also at the very bottom, there is a spring seat that normally will just come up with the magnet, but right now it's being stubborn. There we go. And that is the spring seat. So at this point, we should be able to push our valve out. And that is crusty. And last thing that's in there, there is a seal. You can see right there. We're going to go ahead and pull that out as well. There you go. <laughs> 
So we did the exhaust side first. That is completely disassembled and now removed. We're gonna do the exact same process for the intake side. There we go, you hear the pop. Grab the magnet for the keepers. There's one. And there's the other one. Now we're going to release the tension off the spring. And just like before on top, you've got your spring cap. You've got both your inner and outer springs. Again, make sure you inspect them because a broken valve spring could be your issue. And then push out your valve. This one was our troublemaker. We'll go ahead and grab that seal out and also the spring seat. There we go. And that thing is 100% disassembled. Everything is now completely disassembled and ready to be cleaned up. So off camera, I'm gonna take my time to use some degreasers and some scrubbers and scrub all this stuff down, get it nice and clean before we start reassembling the entire thing. At home, if you guys wanna use hot soap and water, degreaser, carb cleaner, whatever it is, just make sure that it's nice and cleaned and completely removed the contaminants before we pick it back up. I am back from cleaning up this head and I gotta say it turned out rather nicely. Everything went really, really smooth. But one thing I wanna note is just make sure you're taking your time in this step. You don't wanna forget it or skip it because the last thing you do as well, <laughs> do this whole process over again. So while I was cleaning it though, I did find something rather alarming and I wanna show it to you guys right now. As you saw earlier, the problem that we had was with the intake side. So some of you may think, well, hey, I'll just remove this intake valve and get this figured out. But the reason why we take apart the entire thing is to completely inspect all the components. And what I found while cleaning up the exhaust valve, can you see that gouge right there? And then also on the back side, right there where that gouge is, you can see it's cracked. So there's a close up for you. You can see that crack is fairly large. Now the last thing we wanna do is put this back in the head. And if all I did was address this problem and only replace this intake valve, I would have never noticed we had an exhaust valve issue. This would have gone back in the head and it could have been a future problem for later. And we would have had to do this process all over again. So here's the solution. I purchased a complete valve kit for the 125cc. It comes with everything you see here. I bought it from VMC. I think I paid about $10 for it, plus shipping was another five bucks. So for $15, the thing was here in just three days, and this is what we're gonna use. But because we only have an issue with our exhaust valve being cracked, I'm gonna set that off to the side. I'm gonna take the new exhaust valve and put it in its place. Everything else looks good. I think we're gonna be able to lap these valves in, and that intake valve is gonna come back. Everything else is good to go so rather than use all the new parts in i'm going to keep what we have and use this for a later day let's get putting this thing back together grab your valve grinding compound and your lapping tool and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be lapping these valves into this head ultimately creating a nice even seal for that valve to sit and help us build that compression i'm going to start with the intake side so grab your intake valve your valve grinding compound and we're going to dab a little bit of this all around the surface. So slide that down, all the way down in, and you're gonna take your lapping tool and you're gonna start just grinding it in basically. Just work it back and forth. I use my finger and I push up, you can see I push up on the valve to kind of release it a little bit. And that way it kind of gives some space so it goes up and down, up and down. So we get a nice even grind. You're gonna do this for probably about 30 seconds to a minute. When you're done, go ahead and pop it out. We're gonna clean off all that grinding compound. When you're done, you should have a nice, shiny, even surface. It looks like this. I'm gonna grab my new exhaust valve and do the exact same thing. Go ahead and slide that guy in. Go 
All right, I think that's enough. We'll clean that off. Something like that. Now that we have the valves completely lapped in, it's time to get them in the head and secure. This will be probably the most difficult part of this entire process, but I promise just stay patient and it'll be just fine. When you put your valve in, you can see the valve stem is now protruding into this head. I'm gonna show you an example. This is the intake valve. And that's gonna stick right through the head, just like we showed you with that exhaust valve. It's gonna sit just like this. So you can see one and two. And on the top side, we're gonna put our inner spring in. We are gonna put our outer spring on. And then we are gonna have our valve cap, right? What we'll then do is compress this spring down is when this is sitting in the head just like this, it's gonna get compressed, compressed, compressed until that valve stem is exposed. Then we're gonna take our keepers and we're gonna drop them in. So they're gonna look something like that. And as you release the tension on the spring and that lifts up, those grooves in that keeper will catch and it will seal just like that. And I cannot pop this off now, that is tighten in there. So that is the concept of what we're doing only inside the head. All right, let's start with the exhaust side and I'm starting from scratch. So go ahead and take your seal, put your seal on. You've got your exhaust valve. Go ahead and feed your exhaust valve through. You've got a spring seat, inner spring, outer spring, and the spring cap. So as I was saying, that valve's not gonna poke through. That's why we have to compress this spring down. So grab your spring compressor again. So you can see there that spring is compressed just past the groove in the valve stem. That's where we want it. We want it to go just past. That way when we decompress the spring, it picks up those keepers right in the groove. Now for the fun part, trying to get the keepers in. First one's always the easiest one. You can see it's sitting there. Now we gotta get to the other side. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a pick. I'm gonna take a pick and rotate that around to the other side. So then I've got an easy access point to drop in the second keeper. Doesn't always cooperate. All right, so I got just sitting there. I'm gonna use a pick to try and fish it in. And you can see now they're both sitting below that groove, and I'm gonna slowly release tension. All right, we got it. Just like that. And in real time, because the camera lets me know how long I've been recording, that took five minutes. Okay, let's do the other side. Grab our seal. Valve's coming through. Little spring seat, inner spring, outer spring, and cap. Spring compressor. Just for reference again for how deep we're going with that spring. Let's give it a little look over. Very nice. Okay, the hard part is done. The valves are in. Let's go ahead and throw the cam in. Now, I did spend a lot of time cleaning all this stuff, so I used degreaser and carb cleaner. This is where that Permatex engine assembly lube is gonna come into handy. We wanna make sure that we get these bearings nice and coated when we install it. So our cam is gonna go in just like this. You can see these three holes that are threaded. That's where our cam sprocket gets put on. So 
you can see that bearing is just going to slide right in, just like that. Okay, so next up are the rockers, and I've said this before, but it doesn't matter which one's exhaust and which one's intake, they are exactly the same. So if you weren't paying attention when you pulled them out, no worries, neither was I. It doesn't matter what side they go in. Also, remember, we have a compression release in this one, so this has got to go in at this time also. So with a healthy coating of assembly lube, we'll get both of them started. Mess. So I'm going to have them sticking up just a little bit. That way this release valve can sit on top. Um, Rockers going in behind that. You see we can get her in place. And that'll just slide right in. Grab a pick or screwdriver or something. Push it all the way back so it's out of the way. And same for the other side. Let's see that pushes right in. All the way down. There we go. Since we won't be removing the rockers again, I am going to put the side cover back on. In my stash, I did have some extra gaskets, so I'm going to throw that on. These are eight millimeter. And when you're tightening this down, guys, hand tight it all the way. And then slowly go back and forth. According to the Honda manual, this side cover is seven pounds foot of torque. And we're good to go. We are almost done. Go ahead and grab your adjustment screw and your locking nut. On the adjustment screw, you can see there's two ends. One is a squared off end. That's the top. That's the part you kind of put your pliers on and twist it down. The flat edge goes towards the valve. So I'm going to go ahead and screw this in. Now, I'm not setting the valves off the motor. We're going to wait till we install it before we get to the final spec. Right now, I'm just going to get it fairly loose, and I'll show you what I mean. So as I can tap on it, it's still pretty loose. So we're gonna put the nut on and we'll make our final adjustments once this is back on the motor. Flip it over, let's do the other side. Adjustment screw. So there's a little bit of play left and that locking nut. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and throw this thing back on now. And as you can see, I did take some time to clean up this surface and also the top of the piston. Got rid of all of that leftover deposit. So we got a clean surface to marry up to. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my new gasket. And keep in mind, we've still got our dowel pins or our head locators in this seal right here. Go ahead and throw on this head gasket, just like so. All right, intake side up, slide this in. Now don't forget about that little black seal. We'll make sure that sits in there. Get our chain up. We're gonna use this bolt to hold this in place now. Don't over tighten it. Just get it somewhat snug to hold the head on. Double check, make sure everything looks good. We're gonna go ahead and get the head torqued down now. This is where I'm gonna grab my high tack gasket seal it. I'm gonna go ahead and put this around before I put that gasket down. This is not a necessary step. I just do it. Remember the arrow needs to be pointing down. Throw our four washers on. Get them all hand snug. This is very important. Now we've got to torque these down. You don't want to just do in a rotation. You want to go cross and back and forth and lightly do a little bit at a time on each nut. We don't want to torque down one side and have the other side exposed. It's going to cause an uneven wear. And you got to remember, these rods are going through this entire top end. So we want even pressure all the way down to the case. So it's a 10 millimeter, just a little bit at a time. And as you go, don't forget this fifth bolt over here.
once you think you've got them on fairly tight, according to the Honda manual, these mo the Honda motors require 11 pounds foot of torque. Because this is the clone, I'm using the same specs. We're going to set that at 11. We are in the home stretch of this project, and there's really only two things left to do. One, we got to put this motor in time to set those valves. Both are relatively easy to do, but if we make a mistake here, it won't allow the motor to run correctly. So let's start with getting this thing timed up. To make our life simpler with the timing, you notice I left that piston at complete top dead center because that's where we need to be for the timing to work out. Don't worry if you did rotate it or move it around, just check your sight glass, put her back in time. Now that your motor is in top dead center, go ahead and grab your cam sprocket. The cam sprocket does have a timing mark, as you can see right here, that will line up with the timing mark inside this head. What we're doing is actually aligning the cam. Because these holes line up only a specific way on the cam, we know that the cam is gonna be in the right position when the motor is at top dead center. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna fish this sprocket in. And you can see that we need that mark to be up here, not down there. So what I'm gonna do is just rotate it on my finger one notch. on the chain, look at the position. I'm thinking it's still down maybe one. Let's just, let's just double check, let's go one more. I think it needs to be down one. Once it's in line, you can see the dot that's right here on that sprocket is all in line. The motor's in top dead center. We now know everything is put on correctly. So what I'm gonna do is take my bolts, and tighten them down. All right, according to the Honda manual for these motors, it calls for six and a half pounds foot. Mine only goes to six to seven, so I'm gonna go at six and go a little past. All right, time for the side cover. All right, let's get the valve set. Okay, let's start with the intake side. Go ahead and grab your set of your feeler gauges. On the intake side, I'm gonna set mine to five thousandths. Um, for those of you guys running millimeters, it says 127 millimeters. So what you wanna do is put your feeler gauge behind that adjustment screw. And we wanna tighten that down until that metal is nice and snug. See how it's becoming very difficult to move, but we still have some clearance there. We're gonna go ahead and grab our locking nut now, which is a nine millimeter. So what this tool allows you to do is hold that adjustment screw in place while we're taking the locking nut and we're tightening it down. Because if we just tighten that nut down, it's gonna turn the whole thing and it's gonna actually tighten it so this thing will no longer move. And now that valve is set. Go ahead and put our cap back on. Now if the cap's on, we'll go ahead and move to the exhaust side. And for the exhaust side, I'm gonna set that to seven thousandths, or in millimeters, it says 178. Same thing, we're gonna get it wedged in between. All right, all we gotta do now is put some oil in it and see how we did. Now that I've got oil in it, I'm gonna go ahead and set the compression test back up and see what we got. All right, now before I actually put a compression test on it, I'm just gonna allow it to turn over, make sure everything sounds normal. Sounds good. Looks good. Let's see what the test says. All right, well, what do we think? We didn't touch the piston or ring, so those are probably still a little worn. I'm gonna say 140 would be uh, would be a win. Anything above that's gonna be even better. So 
Let's go ahead and give it a try. You guys will see before I will. Woo! <laughs> it's, it's about 155. Man, that is awesome. All right, one more time, just for fun. One fifty, just over one fifty, guys. That is, that is awesome, man. Woo! All right, guys. Well, this video is a wrap. I gotta say, it turned out awesome. The motor at one hundred and fifty-five psi. I could not be happier. Now, if you want to see it running and back in the ATV, it will be in the next video that I post on my channel. I will also leave a link in the description down below. Now, if you learned something from this video or it helped you put your ATV top end back together, I need you to do two things. One, make sure you like this video. Let me know you enjoyed the content. And two, I gotta have you subscribe because it is the only way I can guarantee I will see you on the next one.